Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm presenting this information and I hope you will watch it all the way through. I'm presenting a couple of clips by David Hawking and uh, in them he talks about the 24 elders and he also talks about the new song that they sing. I think this is proof against the pre-wrath, mid-tribulation, and post-tribulation rapture. I believe that any serious Bible student should take heed to what he says. I guess you would like to know a little bit about who David Hawking is. David Hawking was born in Long Beach, California, and after high school he attended Bob Jones University in Greenville, South Carolina, where he graduated with a B.A. in Bible, Greek, and Ancient History. He has also received a Master of Divinity Divinity degree in Biblical Studies, a Doctor of Laws degree, a Doctor of Ministry degree, as well as a Ph.D. degree in Biblical Studies and Languages. David has been preaching and teaching the Bible for over 50 years and has taught courses in Bible Theology, Biblical Languages and Expository Preaching in colleges as well as in graduate schools. He has offered over 30 books and hosts a daily radio broadcast. Revelation 5. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book of the scroll and to open its seals, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God. Some of you have texts that say redeemed men. Redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us, some of you have versions that read them, has made us unto our God kings and priests and we, and some of you have versions that say they, we shall reign on the earth. Now back to Revelation 5 and let's take a look at the problem of this text. Is it us or them? Now here it is, folks, in a nutshell. Listen carefully. This is going to determine whether you walk out of here believing in the pre-tribulational rapture or whether you believe in the post-tribulational rapture, rapture. I'm going to quote one of the greatest scholars on the book of Revelation who is also a post-tribulationist. He says in his book, George Eldon Ladd, Commentary on Revelation that if in fact it is us then that group is speaking about their own redemption and must refer to the church which immediately makes us all pre-tribulational because whatever the 24 elders are they represent a completed group of people he happens to believe they are angels I believe they cannot be angels and it's stated so back in our message in chapter 4 but this is a little bit stronger than you can believe I decided before I come, came tonight to go through all of the Bibles I have. Now I got two shelves of them in all kinds of translations. And I was amazed how often this particular footnote appears. Most ancient authorities agree that the word is them or they. Even in versions that are King James and support the us in the text, there's a little footnote. I have a King James. It has a footnote. Here's what it says. Most early manuscripts omit us in verse 9 and read them and they instead of us and we in verse 10. One of the leading pre-tribulational teachers in America says in his commentary that beyond a doubt all scholars know that the translation is them and they, not us that we pre-tribulationists should not use this passage to teach our point since it reveals our lack of scholarship. <laughs> oh, hey, there are worse statements than that. In various commentaries. Well, you know, I got kind of, you know, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> I decided to look into the matter. I have spoken publicly on this matter and have been asked also by some who are Greek manuscript men to keep my mouth shut. I'm not going to. See, the, uh, the insinuation is, 
listen carefully, the insinuation is that the average layperson cannot really fathom this. I don't believe that at all. I believe the average layperson can fathom it and ought to know about it. First of all, out of all the manuscripts we have, the most important ones are, of course, in the original language, Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. Far more important than any other language into which the Greek is translated. Well, how many manuscripts out of some 5,000 on the New Testament do you think have the book of Revelation, any part of it, in the manuscript? Only 95. There's only 95 known Greek manuscripts on the book of Revelation in, in existence in the world. Now, some may be under the, uh, you know, the protective covering of some hill that archaeology hasn't uncovered yet, but we have only 95 known manuscripts in Greek on the book of Revelation. Now, I ask myself, since these are all fragments, how many of those have Revelation 5 in the fragment? Very interesting, only 24 out of the 95 have Revelation 5. Now, there's only 24 Greek manuscripts in the world that have Revelation 5 in it. I find it extremely interesting that 23 out of the 24 read us. There is, in fact, only one manuscript, Codex Alexandrinus, that says us. Now, you know, I mean, it says them. No. Yes, them. <laughs> hey, after that lion thing last week, I need your help, okay? <laughs> Next project. When the Latin Vulgate was translated, 4th century A.D., Jerome, who translated the Latin Vulgate, became the standard Bible of the Catholic Church for a thousand years, at least, and some still use it. The Latin Vulgate of Jerome, had, he had more Greek manuscripts available to him than we even know exist on this book. And I find it extremely interesting that in the Latin Vulgate it reads us, in both verses, verse 9 and 10. First person plural. You say, well, that's interesting, but, you know. One guy came to me and he said, well, you know, the King James in 1611 didn't have all the evidence, and it wasn't until 1634 that they finally got all the manuscripts from Europe over to England, because King James pushed through to get the 1611 out just in glory to his own name, and uh, really we ought to look at the 1634 edition, which had all the manuscripts. So. You know, when people do that, they kind of intimidate you. So I decided to go look up the 1634 edition. Kind of interesting. It reads us too. <laughs> I looked up the versions. You know, versions mean Greek translated in another language, like Latin and Syriac and Armenian and Coptic and all that stuff. I decided to look up the versions, and I found out they all read us. Well, this is getting more interesting. As a matter of fact, in verse 10, where most of you who have a New American Standard, New International, or footnotes on your King James, it says it should read them. In verse 10, the word them in the third person plural, they shall reign, are all what we call variant readings, even in the manuscript evidence. It means there's a lot of variation as to whether it's them or not. You say, I don't really care about this. Well, you better start caring. By the way, it would be possible to read us in verse 9, since only one manuscript ever changed it. And you could read them in verse 10 as an editorial comment of the redeemed ones in verse 9 and still have the same argument. Did everybody follow that? I didn't think so. <laughs> Here's the point. In verse 9, it's very clear that only one Greek manuscript contains anything but us. Well, let's suppose for a moment, even though there are variant readings that have they and them and they shall reign, let's suppose that that's correct. Then verse 10 is simply an editorial comment on the us of verse 9. The problem here would still exist. If you say in verse 9, thou art worthy because you have redeemed us to God, then the 24 elders are singing a song about themselves that they in fact are redeemed. Angels cannot be redeemed. They are not angels. They have to be people who are redeemed. Is everybody listening? I believe Revelation 1 really settles it. Go back to Revelation 1. Verse 4 says, John to the seven churches. 
verse 5, from Jesus Christ, in the middle of verse, unto him that loved... Well, isn't that interesting? He didn't say unto him that loved them and washed them from their sins in his own blood. He didn't say he made them kings and priests unto God. And this is a direct quotation also in chapter 5, that he's made us kings and priests. No, the us belongs and Revelation 1, 4 to 6 settles it. Because there's no variation on that text whatsoever. You see, friends, what this means is the 24 elders in heaven, a completed body of people in heaven, are literally redeemed believers. The church of Jesus Christ is in heaven all during the tribulation. It is not on earth. 